Hello everybody, this is NCSO7 here, and welcome back to another review video, where today I will be reviewing Persona 5 Strikers. Finally, after what seems like goddamn forever, hell, literally a year, we finally have Persona 5 Strikers in the West. And oh my lord, I'm so excited to do this review, because I beat the game a while ago, I haven't really thought a lot about it, but all this, I'll just say it right now, spoiler alert, I love the game. <laughs> so, let's start at the beginning, and before I get into this review, I want to m emphasize on this, I did not play this game on PS4, Switch, or PC. I played the PS4 version on my PS5, so keep in mind I believe there are some differences if you play the game on PS5 through PS4 backwards compatibility. Um, but, yeah. So just keep that in mind. I played it on PS5, so some things that were good for me may not necessarily be the best for you, depending on the version of the game you play. But with that being said, let's go straight into the presentation. And oh my lord, this game is beautiful. Now, Persona 5 was already a very beautiful game. Stylistically, it's just gorgeous. And Strikers is that times 10. Why is that? Well, the overworld, it's definitely nice. It's pretty much just like the other Persona games where you walk around the overworld, you can talk to characters. But I'll get more into that a little later. Well, yeah, it's still the same thing as normal. It's still nice. But the dungeons, on the other hand, holy snap. Now, given the fact that this is a Warriors game, there are a lot more enemies on screen. And somehow, Koi Tecmo did a very good job of actually translating this game from, like, a Warriors game to a Persona game, at least stylistically and gameplay-wise, but again, we'll get to that later. But seriously, this game is absolutely beautiful to play, look at. It's so good, it's so good looking, and it runs really well as well. Running at 1080p at a solid 60 FPS is so good. It just makes me wish that more of the Persona games run 60 FPS. Hell, why isn't Persona 5 Royal in 60 FPS? That'd be so cool. I know there's mods for it, but still, this game is just beautiful to look at. As well as, of course, the character portraits. While they don't have the varying poses like they did in Persona 5 Royal, they still look very beautiful anyways. But, yeah. I think I've said enough about the visuals. They're beautiful. I mean, you can see them on screen right now, so, yeah. And next is the story. Now, I'm not going to really go into the story much at all. Because, spoilers, honestly, just play the game for yourself. It's... Consis I'd say it's consistently better than what Persona 5 was. However, I wouldn't say it had the same peaks and valleys as Persona 5 did. I don't know. The game story is pretty good. It's basically the Phantom Thieves on a road trip trying to, well, have their fun summer vacation, but also are kind of being chased by the police and basically have to stop bad people from doing bad things with jails, which are basically this game's version of palaces. Except that these jails are significantly bigger and have a lot are a lot bigger on security. So there's that. But that's pretty much the story. Now there's a lot more to it. But again, spoilers. I will say though, the game is really good. I'd say almost every character in the game at least was good. While there are some characters that I like more than others. I still found a lot of enjoyment out of the main characters, especially Sophia and Zenkichi. They're really funny at times. And even other members of the Phantom Thieves get a lot more time to shine. But that's the story. Overall, pretty good. I will say it's a lot more consistently good compared to Persona 5, the original, and Royal. But I think Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal also have better peaks and valleys. Especially since I still think that third semester from Royal is better right better written than that of Persona 5 Strikers. But enough comparing, let's go into the gameplay. Now, the gameplay of this game is pretty different from the other Persona games as this is a quote-unquote spin-off. And I put it in quotes for a very specific reason. 
honestly, this could be Persona 5 2 if the gameplay was not a Warriors game. So let's get into it. Now, overall gameplay is pretty similar to the other Persona games. Like, you have a clock and calendar and all that stuff, but there is one main difference. There are no confidants in the game. Now, there is sort of a replacement for this called Bond. Essentially, there's this thing where if you do things with other members, complete requests, or do specific things, you'll increase your Bond level. And Bond levels allow you to unlock a variety of things. This can revolve in more strength, more health, more stamina, being able to heal yourself if you ambush an enemy properly, a lot of things. And they give you quite a good amount of options, so you're really gonna wanna pay attention to the Bond level. And while this doesn't replace confidence, it is still cool that it, at the very least is there in some form. But don't worry, there are a lot of great scenes with the characters. So, yeah, there's still that. But honestly, aside from that, that's there's really not much to do on the overworld. You can complete specific requests, you can buy various items, and that's pretty much it. There is no deadlines either, unlike the previous games, so... Very, very linear. You don't really have a bad ending in this game, so... Yeah. But that's pretty much the overall gameplay, which is probably the most boring part of the whole game. Now to the best part of the game, the metaverse, or the Emma, or the jails, whatever you want to call it. Oh man, is the gameplay good. Now, similar to other Warriors games, you basically go through this jail, similar to Persona 5, where you go through these palaces, now jails, to basically change the jail owner's heart. You have to release all the desires, and there's a lot of steps that go into it. More steps than normal for the for the palaces, but it's still really good. However, what's biggest difference here is the battles. Now, battles in Persona 5 and Persona 5 R were turn-based. Here, they're basically hack and slashes, and it's really fun. But it's not just hack and slashes. While you can just use the Y button or the square button to just use your normal weapon you can also use your gun as well and you have various amounts of combos and you also have the ability to use your persona holding r or r1 will allow you to summon your persona and you could switch between them using joker and you can inflict various elemental attacks such as fire ice electricity wind all of that stuff really really fun it's really really solid and thankfully every character has their own move set so no character from what i could tell really felt bad to play as and none of them really felt like copies of one another they all are very unique in how they play how they are played although some are better than others personally i'm not the biggest into playing as makoto i know sue me now please don't please don't but it, every character feels so good to play as. Every character is just so much fun to play. And puzzle solving wise, it's not really that bad. But honestly though, that's really all there is for the gameplay that I can really say. I can't really go too deep into it since I don't really know what else to say. It's just really fun. It's a very good stress reliever. If you're into Warriors games, you're gonna love the gameplay here. So definitely check it out if you're interested in gameplay. But Gameplay wise, as a whole, really, really solid. And control wise, I didn't have any issues with the game. Now, in terms of content, I think the game is reasonably priced. Now, it is $60 now, when, at least when I bought it. But I will say, the game is, has plenty of content. It, the game is nowhere near as long as Persona 5, whereas Persona 5 was kind of more of a 70 to 100 hour game. I mean, for me, it was a 60 hour game. Persona 5 Strikers was more of a 30 hour game, and that's not a bad thing at all. It doesn't really feel that short compared to, like, just the other games. It doesn't feel like a short game. They just trim a lot of fat, so it's it's still really, really solid, though. Still definitely worth 60 bucks for the amount of game time, and just because, also because of how good it is, too. So yeah, content-wise, pretty decent. And the soundtrack, oh! The soundtrack is so good. And while it wasn't made by Atlas, it was made by Koei Tecmo, Tecmo from what I know, 
The music in the game is so good. Axe to Grind, What You Wish For, Daredevil, the Blooming Villain remix, the Rivers in the Desert remix, Counter-Strike, Welcome to the Jail, uh, the opening You Are Stronger theme. Oh, this game, game has amazing songs. So many good songs. Oh, there's it's so beautiful. I mean, you can hear some in the background right now. It is really good, soundtrack-wise. Amazing, as always. And now, finally, into entering my final thoughts. This game is really, really good. I'll be honest, should we have waited a year for this game? No, we should not have waited a year for this game. But, was it worth the wait? Yes, it was. <laughs> it was definitely worth the wait. Now... The question remains that I also proposed at the end of my impressions video on the game. Is this game better than Persona 5? And I thought about it for a while and I'm thinking no. I do still think that Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal, specifically Royal, is a better game. I think it, while Royal definitely isn't as consistently great as Persona 5 Strikers, I mean, come on now. Persona 5 is the game that made me buy a PS4 and get into PlayStation in general. So, I can't really downplay that. And Persona 5 Royal. Man, that game is exactly what I needed. Now, Strikers is a great game. Amazing game. It honestly beats Royal in a lot of areas. But, I still like Royal the mo more. However, Strikers is still an amazing game. I cannot recommend it to you enough, although I would advise you to play Persona 5 first, or watch a playthrough of it first to get the basic gist of what's going on. While it isn't required, I would really recommend it. Also, for any Switch beggars, you're not going to be getting Persona 5 on the Switch, so stop begging for it. It's never going to work. Just watch a playthrough or buy a PS4 or something like that. PS4s aren't going to be that expensive anymore, so... Just go for that, or PS5 if you're really that kind of person. But, I'm not going to get into that. But, for my final rating for this game, from zero, for my scale of 0 to 10, I give Persona 5 Strikers a 9.3 out of 10. This game is amazing in everything it was trying to do, and while I do think the game could have been a little better, I would love to see a sequel to this game, especially using a different cast of characters. Maybe potentially the investigation team, maybe Cease. I'd love to see another type of game like this. Because I'd say this is probably the best Musou game I've played, even though I haven't really played that many Musou games before. Only like maybe two. And I didn't even really play much of those anyways. Amazing game. But those are my thoughts on the game. Let me know in the comments section what your thoughts are. I like seeing people's opinions, although I think we can all agree that's an amazing game. But also, if this is your first time checking out my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is greatly appreciated, and liking the video as well, if you want to see more Persona content. So, with that being said, this is NCSO7, signing out. Peace!